So what I really wanted to create here was the first comparative study using 1.3 with enriched oxygen versus 2.0 with enriched oxygen and measuring the same parameters to understand what the differences were in the patients who received lower pressures and in the patients that received higher pressures. So we had three groups. We had a mild pressure treatment group. So they received 1.3 atmospheres on 100% oxygen. We had a high pressure treatment group. They received two atmospheres on 100% oxygen. And then we had a control group. Each of the treatment groups received 100 minutes of hyperbaric oxygen three times a week for five weeks. During that 100 minutes, they each received four air breaks, 20 minutes on oxygen, five minutes air, 20 minutes oxygen, five minutes air. So we did four air breaks with each treatment. They did a series of five weeks, then they had a month off. They did another series of five weeks, and then they were finished. We had 10 people in each group, so 10 in the mild group, 10 in the high pressure group, and 10 in the control group. And then of the 10 in the control, five went into each of the treatment groups for that second round of therapy. These were 40 to 70 year old individuals, mixed male and female. They had to never have had hyperbaric before, and they had to be non diagnosed and asymptomatic. In other words, this wasn't a research project to look at hyperbaric's effect on a disease process. It was a project to look at the effect of hyperbaric oxygen on an otherwise healthy American. And so I wanted to look at, does hyperbaric reduce inflammation in an otherwise healthy population? Does hyperbaric improve cognitive function in an otherwise healthy population? Does hyperbaric shift the epigenome in an otherwise healthy population. As far as the actual results of this project, I was incredibly surprised. Higher pressure had a higher magnitude of effect, lower pressure had a lower magnitude of effect. But there was also something that I didn't expect to find. Especially inside the cytokine data and the epigenetic data, there were entire groups of markers inside this data set that showed higher pressure hyperbaric had an effect that lower pressure just didn't have. And there were also entire groups of markers that showed lower pressure had a certain effect that higher pressure just did not have. Both groups reduced inflammation, both groups improved cognition, and both groups shifted the epigenome in very unique and specific ways. One more thing to note is that between the baseline and the first five weeks of treatment, there were very little changes that were noted. It wasn't really until after the second round of treatment, after the second five weeks of three times a week, so a total of 50 hours of treatment, did we really start to measure massive changes inside a lot of the markers that we were looking at. 